Hey everybody, Luke Gordon here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about shoulder pain and the rotator cuff, and we're gonna use our model today to kind of demonstrate some points. And we're gonna talk about a question that I hear from a lot of people nowadays, both in the clinic and then on some recent videos on YouTube as well, where they're asking me questions about how to heal small tears in their rotator cuff muscles, like the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles, sometimes the subscapularis muscle as well. How can they heal those small tears or how to treat like a tendinosis issue, which often those two are going hand in hand so a small tear several small tears or tendinosis so they're asking how they can heal it they're asking if they can heal it and what to do and a lot of these people have had pain for months some of them years and um, they've tried things you know they've tried certain types of treatment maybe they've tried some type of physical therapy uh, they've had injections and then at some point someone along the way whether it's their doctor physician or uh, like an orthopedic type doctor is saying well go ahead and just rest for a prolonged period of time and if that that doesn't work you know then we'll look into like injections or something like that so the big thing I want to talk about in today's video then is why I think the the general advice of, of resting your shoulder is really poor advice overall if you're looking to heal your rotator cuff muscles and if you're looking to get rid of the pain so that you can you know do overhead movements or you can do weightlifting or whatever it is you want to do with your arm you know throw a ball do push-ups um, for a lot of folks it's just raising their arm you know raising their arm to to do dishes or sleeping on their arm so again that's the main thing that we're going to talk about today is why rest isn't really usually a good option. Um, and then after that, I'm going to talk to you about, okay, if rest isn't the, isn't the answer you're looking for for your shoulder to heal the rotator cuff, then what should you do instead? So first off, let's just dive in um, to the rest part and why it's not good. Uh, before we do, I just remembered, if you wouldn't mind, uh, click subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment before you go. That would help me with my views and stuff. So thank you for that. So again, why doesn't rest help your rotator cuff heal? Whether it's just a tendonitis, tendinosis, or a small tear, it's kind of the same thing. Rest in general doesn't help. And the main reason that rest doesn't help your rotator cuff muscles heal is essentially because they just don't heal that well on their own. They're in a weird spot in your shoulder. So if you look at your shoulder model here might be kind of hard to tell on the camera but that top muscle especially which is your supraspinatus muscle is going underneath this bone which is your chromion now on me that's out here on the side of my shoulder so the muscle starts back on your shoulder blade and it comes underneath your chromium over here just by uh, nature of where that muscle lives and where it runs underneath, there's not a lot of blood supply to that muscle. Whereas like if you took the muscle, like my bicep muscle, um, which isn't very big, but it's got bl good blood supply. Uh, the, the blood just comes in. Um, it doesn't happen that way in the, in the rotator cuff. Look at like my big quadricep muscles or your big glute muscles. There's a lot of blood flow. So those things will heal to some extent if you rest them. Rotator cuff muscles don't tend to heal with rest. Instead, they just sit there with very little blood supply and what happens with rest and this is the big key point for today is what happens with rest is they get weaker now when they get weaker what happens is you take a period of rest say it's a couple days maybe it's a couple weeks and then you go to lift your arm again you do something like this in front of your body um, you reach behind your back that'll kill you um, you know whatever it is you're doing you you try to use your arm and then you notice it hurts even more that's because no amount of healing really took place and the muscle is now weaker. Now, I've talked about this in some other videos, but I'll give you another overview right now, is that mechanically speaking, when your rotator cuff muscles get weaker, you're much more likely to get pinching or what we would call impingement. So as you're lifting your arm, again, your rotator cuff muscles underneath that bone and your ball and socket joint sits underneath there, you go to lift your arm in those certain positions and you pinch. It pinches up into that rotator cuff and it just hurts even more. So you get into this horrible cycle of you, you have pain and so you rest. Um, the rest doesn't accomplish any healing and then it leads to weakness. The weakness leads to more, you could call it instability. It's not really instability, but the weakness uh, leads to worse mechanics of the shoulder, leads to more pinching and leads to more impingement. And then you're just stuck there. Um, so that's why rest really gets you in trouble because you don't heal and then your strength goes down so you're more likely to experience more pain. So rest for most folks with shoulder pain, rotator cuff pain especially, uh, those tears, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the tendinosis, all those lovely terms, it just doesn't tend to do the trick for people. And then for some, they're getting that much closer to an injection, which there's a time and a place for injections, but usually I think they should be avoided with the shoulder if at all possible. So if we know that rest isn't the best solution then, what can you do? Um, so that's a great question, right? Well, okay, rest isn't the best thing. Um, so here's what I think you should do. 
And I'm going to share some links at the end of this video because I'll, I'll go into more expanded detail in those other videos. Um, the first thing is when you talk about rest, what you should really be resting from is activities that aggravate your shoulder. So if there's two or three things that you know really hurt your shoulder, again, lifting up in front of your body is, a, is a, usually an easy one for folks to identify. Reaching behind your back. If you're a weightlifter or you're a thrower, those things that actually aggravate your pain, you do want to rest from those or avoid those while you're trying to heal the rotator cuff. You want to get the pain level down. So do avoid those ones, rest from those activities. And then what you want to do is increase your tissue healing as much as you can. Now, again, I've got some videos I'll link to at the end of this one that I'll talk more in depth about that, but let me just give you the quick overview. So uh, increasing tissue healing is going to include, I like to use heat to help with blood supply. You can use ice if it's really flared up, but heat really helps uh, get the blood flowing there. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing is hands-on therapy. Um, obviously, physical therapy is my go-to because that's what we do. Um, but if you know someone who knows how to get in there and kind of work the tissue, the hands-on therapy will help bring in blood supply and kind of break things up, stir things up, and maybe get the inflammatory process going in a good way. So that's the second thing. The third thing, which is really big, is you do want to do some level of strengthening as soon as you can do so in a pain-free fashion. So early on, that might be like a gentle isometric type exercise. Um, where you're just doing a real gentle contraction of the muscle. Uh, and then that might, uh, that might progress to a more uh, like a resistance type exercise, um, what we would call concentric, um, where you're you know, doing like a band exercise where you're pulling out with real light resistance. And then after that, that might progress to eccentric strengthening, which I'm gonna link at the end of this video as well. So some type of strengthening that's well tolerated is going to improve the blood supply as long as you're not making it feel worse. And then it's also going to help you longer term with your strength, which ultimately you need to strengthen those muscles in order to achieve these types of movements. Again, throwing, lifting, whatever it is. So um, that's the message for today. Rest isn't always your best friend. Uh, usually it'll make you feel worse in the long run. And what you do need to do, everything you can to avoid things that aggravate your shoulder and then do the things that help you improve your tissue healing and then ultimately figure out how to ease your way into basic strengthening, which will ultimately get you into higher level strengthening if you're trying to do things again like overhead activities, throwing, lifting, um, whatever it is you may be wanting to do with your shoulder. So again, I'm gonna link some videos to the end of the, uh, this one, give you some more uh, tips and advice. Probably in the coming weeks, I'll uh, make some more shoulder videos and that'll give you some more um, information, I think especially when it comes to like, okay, what is that progression from isometric to uh, concentric type strengthening to eccentric? How do you do that? So I will make some of those in the future. Uh, but for now, um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe again, like I said, before you go. Leave me some questions or comments below and I'll be happy to get back to you. And I hope the video helps you with your shoulder pain and helps you understand the difficulty with that advice of resting your shoulder and why it just doesn't tend to work. So again, hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.